Hello everyone, this is Adam Anderson, Product Trainer at Maple Systems. Welcome back to our EB Pro Training Series. In the last video, we showed you how to display time series data from your controller in a tabular format using a history data display. In this video, we'll discuss using recipes in EB Pro for batch operations. Industrial applications often rely on set points, thresholds, and other parameters that are fed into a PLC and which may be either fixed or subject to change. An example is in a paint factory where a given paint color is produced by combining different amounts of individual color families such as red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and various neutral colors. In order to start producing a given paint color, you need to provide certain information up front to your PLC or equipment. This could include a name for the paint color and the amount of each of the given colors to use. For simplicity's sake, we use just four pieces of information in our sample project paint color examples here. A name, string, and three values for the colors red, green, and blue. As the author of an HMI application, you want to make it easy for operators to manage production and keep track of jobs that are run. The recipes in EB Pro make it easy to perform batch operations and track and update these set points. Let's take a look at how it works. From the Data History tab, click on Recipe Database. And you can see we already have set up an individual recipe called Paint in our list of recipes. Think of the recipe itself as a database table in the HMI containing different records. Each record contains a column name, that would be the item name here, and rows of data, that would be the value for each item in the records that's defined in the Data tab. What we have defined in this recipe, as I said, is one string for the name and three numeric values for R, G, and B. From this data tab, now you can see I have set up five different records. So these are predefined paint colors, and we have one placeholder record called custom that I left at the default value of zero for each of the colors. This is where you can pre-configure specific batches or types of jobs for your application. These are the individual instances of your recipe, whose parameters are defined in the Definition tab here. To use programmer terminology, from this Definition tab you can declare your variables, and from the Data tab you can instantiate them in these separate rows that we call records. We can quickly set up a new recipe and define the items as follows. Just click on the green plus sign button here to add a new recipe. Give it a name such as dimensions. And now click on the new button in the item definition area. For example, we could set up placeholder variables for the X, Y, and Z dimensions of some imaginary product for manufacturing. We'll first start by defining the data type, 32-bit float, and then let's make X the first item name we have an X dimension, and then we'll click New twice more and set the item names to Y and Z. So now we've defined the new recipe and what items should be in it, as well as their data types. We can also set the number of decimal points to keep track of here, and we'll make these all one decimal point. Now from the Data tab, clicking on the Dimensions recipe, we can create a new record. For our first record, we're going to do 1.1, 2.2, and 3.3. Now we've defined a new record for the dimensions recipe. Now let's see how we can select a record from the recipe database on the HMI itself. So we'll click OK. And let's go to the Data History tab again and click on Recipe View. Here you select the recipe name, Dimensions and then you can add this to your project window. If we run offline simulation, you can see how this will work. We have two recipe view objects set up on this window. The first is showing all of our predefined records for paint colors, and the second is showing our single record for the dimensions recipe. In the next video, we'll walk you through how you can change and update records and add new records and then send them to your PLC using the data transfer feature. Check that out in the next episode.